It's an honor to be here today to uh, introduce Emily Coates. She has been a volleyball player here at Harbor for three years. Uh, she is Harbor's ninth volleyball player to sign to go on to the next level and play volleyball. I'm really excited about that. Um, she is signing today with the University of Arkansas at Fort Smith. Uh, they have been conference champs for the last three years. With her today is her parents, Mark and Angela Coates, and her brother, Zach. Emily has been involved in sports since she was in the seventh grade. She's played basketball at Central in the seventh and eighth grade. She's been involved in track 7th uh, through ninth grade at Central in her 10th and 11th grade year here at Harbor. She's also been involved in volleyball at the junior high level in the 8th and ninth grade at Central. And here at Harbor, like I said earlier, she's been a three-year starter for the varsity team uh, here at HVHS. Uh, Emily has played club volleyball for Ozark Juniors for the past four years. She played this past year on the 18th uh, national team that competed in Dallas. Outside of sports, Emily is involved in FCA and National Honor Society. And Emily holds a very special place in my heart because she is such a hard worker. She has worked through injuries to try to fight back to be able to play at the level to where she's going to be playing this next season at Fort Smith. And the only thing I have left to say about Emily is she's going to make a great college player. She's got the dedication, she's got the hard work that it's going to take, and I think that Ufus is getting a great volleyball player. Um, at this time, I would like to uh, turn it over to Brett Unger. He's going to talk a little bit about her track career, which has been a big part of her life also. Thank you, Coach Jones. <clears throat> I'm honored to speak about Emily today. Um, my first impressions of Emily were in the fifth grade. Actually, she was kind of up here in the fifth grade. Um, she'd do her gymnastics routine all over the Hellstrom gym uh, floor and use every line as her balance beam and do her balance beam routines all over. I've always joked with Emily, and one day when she was in fifth grade, I challenged her to climb on the rock wall on the hardest level all the way across, knowing that she would fail because I had six, six and seventh graders that couldn't do the exact same thing I'm asking her to do. However, she proved me wrong, and she monkeyed all the way across that thing, and uh, it took her a while, and it was hard, but she was dedicated, and she made it happen. Um, I was impressed. One more, the more I got to know her, the more I saw a young lady that was mature beyond her years, and uh, she started pole vaulting with my wife in seventh grade and had an extremely successful junior high track career, winning two conference champions, championships and two regional championships and, um, and the pole vault and helped Central Junior High win its only conference track title in school history on the girls' side. Her passion became volleyball and she continues to be a strong part of the Harbor track team, placing third at conference last year as a junior. She became very committed to getting better. In fact, last spring, most days, she'd wake up early to go work out at World Gym at 6 a.m. She'd go to Harbor volleyball practice in the morning. She'd come to track practice in the afternoon. She'd grab a quick bite to eat and go to club volleyball practice at night. And that's the kind of dedication she has. And uh, if you know Emily and you know our relationship, you'll understand this story a little better. But um, one of those four practice days last year in January, uh, she came out to the track. It was a cold day. Uh, track athletes don't like to run when it's cold, but we do anyway. She comes out early and says, uh, 
And if you know her humorous and charming side, you'll understand this. She says, Coach Hunger, if you don't make me work out today, I can get you a free round of golf at the Blessings. And she knows my weaknesses, obviously. And uh, so I, I thought long and hard about that one, honestly. Um, and I almost said, all right, go, get out of here. But um, it was a very, very tempting offer. I had never had an athlete try to bribe me out of a workout, especially offering a round of golf the blessings. But reluctantly, I refused her offer and made her work out anyway. After practice, I brought her over there and I said, Emily, how can you get me on at the blessings? And she goes, I can't. I just knew that was my best bet. <laughs> So if you know, if you know her, you, you'd understand that. Um, Emily, it's been so much fun cheering you on and watching you grow up in a dedicated and charming girl that you are. Congratulations, we love you and are very proud of It's something that he's worked on, and every year 
if you look at his averages, just continue to get better and drop in five, six strokes every year uh, because of the commitment he made over the summer. Uh, part of that's due with his parents, Tony and Deborah, uh, went through that. Anybody that's real serious about golf, they've got to go and travel. And they, they paid a, you know, a, a lot in their investment in having to travel to tournaments all over, not only Arkansas, but Oklahoma and Missouri and Texas and uh, pretty much all around the, you know, this region during the summers to, to let them have that competition. Uh, it, to me, his strengths is that he's just a very solid player in all areas. He doesn't, doesn't have any just one area that stands out, but he also doesn't really have any major flaws. He's good with his driver, he's good with his irons, very good short game, a steady putter. And I think the most important thing is he's what's called a grinder. Uh, it's a golf term for somebody that just finds a way to, to make bars even though they may have a bad lie or they may be in the woods, they find a way to put it in play, give themselves a chance. And he uh, really good at avoiding having any blow up holes. And that's something that you know, you can't say about all of our golfers. Sometimes when things go bad, they may not handle it as well. Connor has that mental toughness to be able to come back from a bad shot or a bad hole. And I think that's, that's been a big, uh, uh, big part of his success. Uh, in closing, uh, I, I think that Connor's gonna continue to work and improve. He's shown that, you know, over the four years I've, I've had him. Uh, I think Missouri Southern, will be getting a great asset to their program. He's not only a good golfer, but also a very good student and, and a very high character kid. Uh, so I think his hard work is gonna pay off for him. It already has in the form of a scholarship, and I think he's gonna have a great career at Missouri Southern. I look forward to seeing uh, him continue to develop. And it's nice that it's only an hour away. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Connor. I'll let him say a few words now. Good morning. I would first off like to thank Coach Ains and my teammates. We had a great finish to our season this year, placing third at the state tournament. I would also like to thank Nate Bryant at Pennington Country Club and all the guys at Lost Springs for all the help that they have given me this past year. I also want to thank Coach Wheeler at MSSU for giving me this wonderful opportunity to be a part of their program and take my game to the next level. Lastly, I want to thank my mom and dad for all their support throughout the last four years, taking me to over 20 tournaments this past spring, summer, and fall. That showed me how much they supported me and believed in me. No matter how expensive or far a tournament was, they were always willing to take me if they could. Without them, I truly could not have achieved this goal. Thank you.